Hey guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I've got 10 cold weather tips for you and your e-bike. Now it is November, but it's pretty nice where I am, so I don't need this. But depending where you are, it might be getting pretty cold out. So hopefully these tips will help you and your e-bike this winter. Now let's get started. Tip number one is not to leave your lithium battery outside in the cold any more than you have to. When a lithium battery gets cold, which is around uh, below 5 to 10 degrees Celsius or below 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, at those temperatures and below, lithium batteries just don't work as well. Um, they have less power, they're less efficient, and uh, they're just not gonna, you're not gonna get as good performance out of them. So when possible, you wanna bring your battery inside as opposed to leaving it out in the garage or on your bike when it's locked up. That way, when you come back to ride your bike again, your battery will already be warm and you'll have better performance right off the bat. Tip number two is to not charge your battery when it's too cold, especially not below freezing, which would obviously be zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But even up to about uh, 10 degrees Celsius or um, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you wanna try avoiding your, avoid charging your battery, or if you have to at those temperatures, try to charge at a lower current, because charging at very low temperatures can degrade the quality of your battery over time. It's just not good for it. So when possible, if you are going to charge your battery after it's been outside, try to leave it sitting inside for a few hours to warm up, at least to about uh, 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit before you try to charge it. Tip number three is that you might want to be charging your battery more frequently in the winter than you used to in warmer weather. Now many people will only charge their battery a couple of times a week as much as they need it for their short trips. However, when your battery gets colder on your bike, it's not gonna be able to deliver as much usable energy as it did when it was warmer. So what might have been enough to last you a week before is definitely not gonna be enough when your battery is cold in the winter. So you might wanna be charging your battery more or even charging it higher if you normally charge it to a lower cutoff voltage. Now tip number four is about storing your battery. In the winter, many people find themselves riding their e-bike less than they used to in warmer weather. If your e-bike's gonna be sitting for up to about a week or so, it's all right to leave your lithium battery fully charged, but it's better if you can bring the voltage down a bit to um, below about 90% charge. So that can be as easy as just taking your e-bike out and riding it for a couple of miles, just to burn off 10% or so of the energy in your battery. That's gonna make your battery last longer when you don't store it at such a high uh, voltage and such a high capacity. Um, when you're storing your battery for a longer period, like if you're not going to ride your e-bike all winter, you definitely don't want to store your battery fully charged. In that case, for long periods, over a month or so, you want to try and bring your battery down below half charged. At that point, it's a much better storage voltage and it will make your battery last longer and not degrade it during storage. You just want to avoid storing your battery for long periods at full charge. Tip five is to waterproof your e-bike as best as you can. Now, a lot of the components are already gonna be fairly waterproof. Things like um, your throttle, your display, uh, things like that, they're usually pretty splash-proof. Uh, if you have a controller, they're usually fairly waterproof, but you do want to mount them with the wires facing down. If you mount them with the wires facing up, you've just basically destroyed all the waterproof defensing and the gaskets on your controller because when the wires exit up, water can splash onto them and then run down the wires through the holes and into the controller. So anything that has a wire coming out of it, you want the wire to exit down so that any water that lands on it will just drip off of it. Um, other components like, uh, let's see, your battery. If you have a battery bag, like I do in my e-bike back here, you, uh, you wanna check that zipper. Some of the zippers, like on this EM3 EV bag, have this nice waterproof covering on them, or at least water resistant. But if you don't have uh, some type of water resistant zipper, you might want to take some wax or even like a bar of soap and just go over that zipper a bit to make it a little more splash proof. Um, for batteries that are in hard cases, you know, like shark packs or dolphin packs or the halons, anything that has like a plastic or aluminum case is probably fairly water resistant, but you do want to check your connectors and also make sure you're replacing any of those plastic covers over things like your charger connector so you don't get water splashing in there. Tip six is to always clean your bike after riding if you can. 
Now, getting water on your bike generally isn't so much of a problem, but in the winter, there's a lot of salt on roads, and that is a real problem, both for your electrical components and for the steel on your bike. Things like your chain and your crank set and gears, all of that exposed steel on those moving parts, it can be a problem. So you wanna try and dry off your e-bike when you're done using it, and then um, hit the moving parts like the chain and the crank set with some water displacement like a WD-40, followed by some type of oil to help keep water off of those components. Also your cables, like your brake cable and your shift cable, you wanna try and keep some nice oil inside of the housing to keep water out because you don't want your cables and the housing on the inside rusting out. Tip seven is that if you live in an area with snow and ice for much of the winter, consider getting proper snow tires. Now, if you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow and ice, this is basically a necessity. But if you only have occasional snowstorms and occasional icing, you might not need dedicated snow tires. There is sort of this DIY poor man's solution, which is just to take zip ties or cable ties and place them at in increments around the tire and the rim. Now this is only gonna last for maybe a few days or a week, depending how much riding you're doing, but it is gonna be a lot cheaper than getting dedicated snow tires. Obviously this is only gonna work though if you have disc brakes and not if you have rim brakes. Tip eight is to try and lower your seat if you can to keep your feet closer to the ground and your center of gravity lower. This way, if you slip on some ice or snow, it's gonna be really easy to just put your feet out and regain your balance and not have to lay your bike down and uh, you know possibly get injured. So if you can, I know a lot of people, they try to keep their seat higher for optimum pedaling, but if you can, try and keep your feet a little closer to the ground in the winter, just in case you need to splay your feet out and get your balance. Tip number nine is that fenders are your friend. Now the last thing you want in the winter when you're all bundled up in your jacket is to get a face full of uh, wet water spray and slush from your front tire or to get that spray, the rooster tail from the rear tire going down the back of your neck. So, you know, get some like cheap five, $10 plastic fenders. They only have to last for a few months. Put them on your bike and keep all that spray and slush from the road from hitting you and it'll just save you a world of hurt. And the last tip, number 10, and I cannot stress this enough, please slow down in the winter, all right? Not only is it gonna keep you more comfortable by reducing the wind chill factor, but it's also just a lot safer. You know, when the roads are in bad conditions and there's snow and ice out there, there's no reason to go flying around those turns. Just, you know, relax, slow it down a bit, and enjoy the nice, beautiful winter. All right, so those were 10 tips on uh, things that you can do for your e-bike to make it perform better in the winter. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any other tips, the things that I forgot, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And let's see, lastly, it's time for the weekly ebikeschool.com book giveaway. If you'd like to win a copy of my book, either the ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guide or DIY lithium batteries, how to build your own battery packs, all you have to do is put a comment below this video, anything you wanna say. And in my next video, I will be choosing one random commenter from the comments on this video to win one of my books. And the winner from the comment section of my last video is, and I have no idea how to pronounce this, but this guy. Uh, thank you for the comment. It's, those are good questions. Uh, to answer them real quick, basically uh, amps is a measure of the rate of flow of charge in a circuit, and amp hours is a measurement of the capacity of a battery based on how much current it can flow over a certain amount of time. Um, this brings me to another interesting uh, subject because there's a lot of confusion out there I know about these terms and different definitions and circuits and uh, the electronics we use on e-bikes. So it might be useful for me to make a video on some of these uh, definitions and terms and how we use these things uh, as they relate to e-bikes. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know if that's something that would be helpful. And um, I think that's it. All right, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and you can hit the little bell to make sure you get notifications when I post new videos. And lastly, thanks for watching guys.